Hi guys, it's Dan from Dan's Best Tech. In 2006, Nintendo improved the design of the 2004 dual-screen clamshell Nintendo DS by releasing the Nintendo DS Lite in the United States. Although the improvement didn't push the graphics to the Sony PSP levels, this improvement did replace the awkward and bulky design of the original 32-bit portable gaming console with a very aesthetically pleasing slimmed-down clamshell case design. And it changed the screens from the washed-out front-lit displays to the much brighter and clearer back-lit displays, similar to what Nintendo did with the Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101 and the Game Boy Micro models released in 2005. Is the Nintendo DS Lite worth it in 2020? And how does it compare to the other Nintendo handhelds like the Game Boys, the original DS, the DSi, the 3DS and all of its variants, and even the Nintendo Switch? Stay tuned for more. Regarding the cost, the DS Lite launched at $130 in Polar White, Onyx Black, Coral Pink, Crimson Red, and Cobalt Blue. But now you can find the DS Lite as well as all the other DS and 3DS handhelds pretty cheap on Amazon and eBay for less than $30 today. Just make sure that the hinge is working. I purchased my DS Lite from GameStop back in 2007. Pink was the only color available and I thought to myself, I'm going to switch to a custom case anyways, so pink is just fine. Now it's 14 years later and I'm still rocking the pink DS Lite. I'll get around to fixing it one of these days though. The DS Lite's dimensions are 5 inches wide, 3 inches tall, and less than an inch thick, and it weighs less than half a pound. It is approximately 40% smaller and 20% lighter than the original DS. The reduced size makes it easier to fit inside your pocket. Additionally, unlike the original DS, the top and the bottom halves of the DS Lite line up perfectly instead of the bottom half being larger than the top half. And the rounded edges make a much more ergonomic and easy to hold design. As a con to the design, I've been reading reviews that the high gloss cases easily show scratches and fingerprints, but this happens mostly on the darker colors. My pink DS Lite has never had this problem. Some people also complain about the smaller size, but that hasn't been a problem for me either. I guess it has to do with the fact that the DS only includes a D-pad. If there were dual analog controls like on the new 3DS and Switch, I'd want something a little larger to hold on to with my pinkies and ring fingers for precise analog controls but using a D-pad is super easy for me of a handheld this size. I mean, it's easier than the Game Boy Micro. Regarding the screens, both of them on the DS Lite are 3-inch transmissive TFT LCDs with 256 by 192 resolution and 110 pixels per inch. Even with the overall size reduction from the original DS, the screen sizes haven't changed. Both of the screens on the DS have four different levels of brightness as well, while the original DS only had two. I would say that the screens on the DS Lite get very bright and are much brighter than the original DS. Additionally, the screens are now backlit, so colors pop more than the original DS as well. The bottom screen has the same resolution as the top screen, but it includes a resistive touchscreen layer added to it, which I know sounds outdated to the capacitive touchscreens of today, but this was game-changing back in the 2000s. The bottom screen's resistive touch capabilities allow you to interact with it via a stylus or a fingernail. I have to emphasize that your nail will work much better than you trying to use the blunt end of your finger like on smartphones and the Nintendo Switch today. Remember, the DS line came out when styluses were still popular before Apple popularized capacitive touchscreens on their iPhones. As a side note, the touchscreen on the newer 3DS is still resistive, but works much better with the blunt end of your finger and doesn't really require a stylus or a fingernail. Furthermore, as I said earlier, the touchscreen on the Nintendo Switch is fully capacitive, so it will work just like your iPhone or Android phone. Of course, unlike smartphones today, you don't have to use the touchscreen for all controls. The DS Lite has standard face buttons similar to the 3DS and Nintendo Switch, and they feel just fine to me. The buttons aren't as tactile or clicky as they are in the original DS, the 3DS, and the Switch, but I got used to them within an hour. The good news is that the buttons are much quieter than the original DS, the 3DS, and the Switch's tactile and clicky buttons. Therefore, I can play the DS Lite in bed without annoying my wife while she is trying to sleep. The D-pad feels great as well. It is smaller than the original DS's D-pad, but is similar in size to the D-pad on every other Nintendo handheld sold prior and since. The shoulder buttons are tactile and have a very satisfying click. Their travel distance is less than the original DS, but they feel more ergonomic to me even though the DS Lite is smaller.
Moving to the battery, the battery life is less than the originals, but you're trading battery life for a much clearer and brighter screen as well as a smaller and lighter handheld. You'll get roughly five hours on a charge at maximum brightness. I know it's not super exciting to hear today, but closing the DS Lite will put the game to standby, allowing you to pick up exactly where you left off without having to restart the game. Oh, and my battery is still going strong 14 years later. The DS Lite will sit in my closet for years, and I'll just think, hmm, I could play some Final Fantasy, and boom, I'll play for an hour without having to charge the system first. But if the battery has degraded for you, you can easily open the battery compartment and replace it. Regrettably, you do have to charge the Nintendo DS using a Nintendo's proprietary charger, and the charger is different than the original DS and DSi charger. The user interface is very simple. At the top, you see a rudimentary clock and calendar. The bottom screen lets you change the brightness, launch games, and shows the apps for settings, PictoChat, and DS Download Play. I'll discuss DS Download Play a little later in the video, but PictoChat lets you join chat rooms with other users, you can type messages and send emojis and drawings. In the Settings app, you can change the language, the screen GBA games will play on, whether or not you want to auto-boot DS games, the date, the time, the alarms, the colors, your birthday, and you can even calibrate the touchscreen. So now let's finally talk about the game's selection. There exist over 1800 DS games and over 1500 Game Boy Advance games that you can play on the DS Lite. The Nintendo DS's dual screens are reminiscent of the Nintendo's dual screen gaming devices from the 80s and allows developers to innovate their game design for dual screens with touch capabilities. The developers had to decide what to put on each screen. Some games simply extended what existed on the top screen to the bottom screen, others used the bottom screen for inventory. The stylus integration works great for quick selection of options, but other games let you move your character around with it. The graphics quality of the games feel like the PlayStation 1 or Nintendo 64 era, but the best games on the DS are 2D games in my opinion. So now let's move to the Game Boy Advance games. Yes, the DS Lite is still backwards compatible with your Game Boy Advance game cartridges. You simply insert the Game Boy Advance game into the bottom slot, but they do stick out. Game Boy Advance games on the DS Lite look great on these backlit displays and look very similar to when they run on the Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101 backlit displays. Although the 240 by 160 resolution of the Game Boy Advance isn't an exact match to the DS Lite's 256 by 192 resolution, black bars will exist on the sides of the display to give a perfect crisp one-to-one -one clear image. And as I said before, you can change whether you want the Game Boy Advance game to run on the top or the bottom display in the settings. Sadly though, just like the Game Boy Micro, the DS Lite does not let you play your original Game Boy Color or original Game Boy cartridges. That said, you can use Goomba Color Emulator to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs and backups on the DS Lite just like you could on the Game Boy Micro. Also, the DSi, the next version of the DS, and all variants of the 3DS do not have a Game Boy Advance cartridge slot, so you won't be able to run your physical game cartridges on these newer systems. But you can run Game Boy Advance ROMs and backups off of their SD card slots with custom firmware or flash cards if you really wanted to. And Nintendo will gladly resell you some of your favorite Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games through their virtual console on the 3DS. As far as multiplayer on the DS, one of the coolest features is DS Download Play. This option is available from the launch screen and allows two players to play multiplayer games with two DSs and only one DS game cartridge. This is similar to single pack multiplayer on the Game Boy Advance and Download Play on the 3DS, but the number of games to support this on the DS is far superior. Nintendo originally also had an online gaming service for the DS as well, but it shut down those servers in May of 2014. That said, you can still play multiplayer locally over Wi-Fi, and if you really want to play online, there exist multiple online services like Wimfi, Wimfi, Wi, WeMMFi to get you back in the game. But that setup is complicated. What about multiplayer games for Game Boy Advance? Unfortunately, Game Boy Advance multiplayer never worked on the DS over the wireless connection, and no Game Boy Advance wired link cable works on the DS or Nintendo DS Lite. So why would anyone want to buy the DS Lite today in 2020 when there are so many other options? The DS Lite is smaller and slimmer than the original DS and is the last DS to let you play your physical Game Boy Advanced cartridges. 
But if you only want to play your Game Boy Advance games, then the Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101 model has a slightly brighter screen and lets you play your original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. However, you lose the headphone jack. When compared to the Game Boy Micro, the Game Boy Micro is smaller with a higher pixel density, but you lose the clamshell design that protects the screen when not in use. That said, neither of these options let you play Nintendo DS games. The original DS continues to let you play your Game Boy Advance games, and the entire cartridge will fit inside the Game Boy Advance slot. It just lacks the industrial design, it's larger, and its washed out front lit display is terrible. The newer DSi includes an SD card slot to download games from the eShop. It includes cameras, it has an internet browser, and it has a few exclusive DSi and DSiWare games. You just lose the Game Boy Advance slot for your physical Game Boy Advance cartridges. To me, if you're looking at getting a DSi, you might as well get a 3DS since the 3DS is still backwards compatible with all DS and DSi games. It still has the SD card slot, still has the cameras, and even has a brighter and sharper screen. Additionally, the 3DS sips power when playing NDS games, so its battery life excels. But just like with the DSi, you lose the ability to play your physical Game Boy Advance cartridges. That said, as I said before, you can play Game Boy Advance ROMs off the 3DS and DSi for using the SD card. Game Boy Advance flashers and dumpers do exist, so if I were wishing for things, I wish a skilled person would build an adapter that can plug into the 3DS or DSi that lets us dump Game Boy Advance ROMs off of a cartridge directly to the 3DS or DSi, similar to the way that the Retron 5 lets you do it. I love being able to save my games back onto the cartridges using that system. In conclusion, is the DS Lite worth it in 2020? I'd say yes. If, like me, you want to play the huge variety of Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS cartridges, you want to use a headphone jack, you want a DS that has a superb backlit display that is brighter and much clearer than the original DS, you want a smaller and perfected design over the original DS, you want a DS with quiet buttons that feel great, and you don't want to pay a lot for the handheld and its games, then the Nintendo DS Lite is for you. Just remember, it gets slightly worse battery life than the original DS and the 3DS when playing DS games, official online multiplayer has been discontinued, and it lacks an SD card slot and the eShop. Let me know in the comments, how do you play your Game Boy Advance and NDS game collection? Click like if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more, and let me know in the comments if there's something else you'd like to see. Catch you in the next one.